Okay, now for section 6.3, we're going to talk about applications of the normal distribution. The way that we're going to solve any problem that satisfies a normal distribution is to convert the information to a standard normal. So if you remember, the standard normal uses an average that equals zero and a standard deviation that equals one. So mu is zero, sigma is one. Now we need to work with some sort of real life problems. And the thing is, they are not going to have that mean of zero or standard deviation of one. So what we're going to have to do is basically convert everything so that it becomes standard normal. So we won't start with standard normal, but we can turn everything into it. And the way we do that is using the z-score formula. And if you remember the formula for the z-score, it's x minus mu over sigma. Or to kind of put it in layman's terms, whatever our data value is minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So what we'll do is we'll start off with some sort of real world problem like over here, but to be able to use our tables, I'll need to convert it into some sort of standard normal data. So I'm making something up. I'm picking a problem. Let's pick a mean of eight and a standard deviation of three. I don't know, it's the weight of a dog, a small cat. I don't know. But anyways, that means whenever I have a mean of eight, I know that my bell-shaped curve is centered over eight. And if I was to go one standard deviation to the right, then I would just have to add a standard deviation of three. So eight plus three is 11. And now I've gone one standard deviation above average. Same process to go below average. I need to subtract the three from the eight to go one standard deviation below average. So eight minus three is five, and I'm one standard deviation below average. So in real life, we might get some sort of question that says, you know, what's the probability of this small dog weighing between five to 11 pounds? From this one, we can see, you know, that it's within a standard deviation above and below, and we could use the tables. But actually, you can't use the tables because I can't look up 8, 5, and 11. I'll not that you'd look up the 8 on the table. So I need to turn around and make that into my bell-shaped curve where I've got a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 so I can use our tables. So the first thing I know is that my curve is centered over 8, but when I standardize it, it's going to be centered over 0. I just know that from having you know, drawn all the pictures, but really I should be using that z-score formula to prove that. So what I would do is take the data value I was working with, in this case an eight, plug it into the z-score formula where I subtract the given mean and divide by the given standard deviation. And when you do the math, you do get zero. We know it because it was centered there. But now I can do the same sort of thing above. Like, let's say I wanted to know that 11, I didn't automatically realize that it was just the mean plus the standard deviation. So I wanted to calculate how many standard deviations 11 is above 8. Then I would take my z-score formula, where I'm starting with 11, and I'll end up calculating out an answer of 1 because 11 minus the mean of eight divided by the standard deviation of three is gonna calculate to be three divided by three, which is one. We know it because I'd already written it and that's how we calculated it. They're just kind of showing the process. And the same thing goes for the five. It's one standard deviation below average, but I could have mathematically calculated that <clears throat> sorry, by taking the five, subtracting from the mean, dividing by the standard deviation, and I get a negative one. So now if I end up with the number six, I can't just tell without doing some math how many standard deviations below average six is, but this formula would help me figure that out. So to summarize the process, 
basically the steps that we're going to use to solve any normal distribution. Notice it doesn't say standard normal, it just says normal distribution. Personally, I like to draw the picture. You don't need to draw the picture, but when I do, I start by drawing that bell-shaped curve and then shading, you know, area to the left, area to the right, area in between, because that always helps me use the table. But whether you draw the picture or not, you're absolute, that's a star, <laughs> you're gonna absolutely have to convert to a z-score. And then don't forget that when we go to use the table, our z-scores only have two digits to the right of the decimal, so you'll need to round so that you have two digits to the right, because when we convert to a z-score, we don't always get perfect two-digit decimal numbers. And then, you know, regardless of whether you drew the picture or not, you're going to have to use the table to find probability. And I got to point out, if you're not using the table on every problem here, something's wrong.